Washington and the world mourn the passing of 91-year-old Konrad Adenauer, former West German chancellor, one of this century's great leaders and statesmen. President Johnson announces he will attend the funeral in Cologne, while diplomats and fellow statesmen express condolences at the West German embassy. Der Alte, or the old man as he was affectionately known, was the rebuilder of a shattered and disgraced post-war West Germany. Beloved, respected, his death marks the end of an era. In 1949, Adenauer, already a national father figure, former mayor of Cologne and strong anti-Nazi spokesman during the war, became West Germany's first post-war chancellor and started the long, difficult job of rebuilding his nation. Personal diplomacy with military men was constant and effective. All world leaders held him in high esteem. His career included renewed diplomatic friendship with Russia. This meeting with Bulganin and Khrushchev freed thousands of German war prisoners held for 10 years. Physically, a man of fantastic energy, emotionally compassionate and spiritually a devout Catholic. His favorite maxim, I am a man. I count nothing human indifferent to me. The world community will miss him. In Washington, astronauts Borman, McDivitt, Slayton, Shira, and Shepard attend a congressional subcommittee hearing probing the Apollo capsule disaster. The questions pertinent to the flash fire which killed fellow astronauts Virgil Grissom, Edward White, and Roger Chaffee center on whether or not the spacemen have thereby lost confidence. Texas Democrat Olin Teague, committee chairman, at a packed hearing room, listened to Walter Shira's answer. I would say that on January 27th, at the time I landed in Houston, I lost all confidence. And that's only natural. We suffered a very grievous accident from something we thought wouldn't happen. Now, from that point on, we've had many different tests performed on flammability of materials. We've discovered that many of the materials must be changed. When these are changed and when tests are completed on the new materials, our confidence is restored. Mysterious spreading oil creates troubled waters off Cape Cod, fouling a 40-mile stretch of national seashore and killing at least 300 waterfowl. Bills and feathers were heavily coated with a gummy residue like soft asphalt. The Cape shoreline from Provincetown to Chatham bore sad evidence of the black sludge, whose source may be a sunken wartime tanker. Estimated beach cleanup, two weeks. This is the DO-31, a new prototype aircraft capable of vertical takeoff and landing. The world's first of transport size. Six Rolls-Royce engines give it lifting thrust, while two Bristol Pegasus engines power its horizontal flight. Dubbed the Big Rig, it can go straight up from the ground, independent of conventional airport runways, like these at Oberpfaffenhofen. Where else? During the first test flight, the craft also demonstrates hovering turns, a boom to jet-jammed airports. Look, Ma, no runway space. Austrian fashions on display in New York on their way to Expo 67, the World's Fair in Montreal. Functional knits are accented. A sporty three-piece ensemble, also knitted, has pleated skirt, luson, and top. It's by Marvien. Franz Kugler designed this pantsuit ensemble, practical yet flamboyant, sort of Viennese mod. In the spotlight, a unique Egyptian-styled wedding gown, a design of the costumer for the Austrian National Theater. Another wild wedding gown topped by a military cap. These daring sides are strictly for the peekaboo type bride, but interesting. And this one is perfect if the groom happens to be an Asiatic Indian. It's proof positive that Viennese couture with no schmaltz is a long way from the Strauss Waltz. The biggest wheels in professional bicycle racing shove off for a speedy 150-mile race in Frankfurt. Included in the field of peripatetic peddlers is world champ Rudy Altic of Germany. The race bears the local nickname around the Henninger Tower. It's a great test of raw muscle power as well as strategy. 
winner, unheard at Daniel van Rijkegem of Belgium. Dan's time almost six hours past the liniment. A record field of 601 starters, brave chilly winds and a steady drizzle in the 71st Boston Marathon. The world's most famous foot race even attracts a leggy lady, Kay Switzer of Syracuse, who did not finish. Officials tried to jostle her off the road. The classic distance, 26 miles, 385 yards, takes its toll among the entries as they plod the winding, hilly course, one part of which is dubbed Heartbreak Hill. The winner, Dave McKenzie, a 24-year-old New Zealander, who trims 48 seconds off the record, winning by 300 yards. Runner-up, Tom Laris, now of Oakland, California, former Dartmouth champ. Third placer, Yutaki Oaki, joins McKenzie and Laris. 1967 Bunyan Derby of Boston is now history. Some men, when they reach maturity, stand on their own two feet. But not Lucky Hoffmeyer of Regensburg, Germany, who plans to walk this way from his hometown to Rome. He's a distance walker. And the distance just happens to be 683 miles. The whole stunt was prompted by a bet which Lucky plans to win. Averaging 18 miles a day, he should get to the Via Veneto in 38 days, if he has the traffic lights with him.